Welcome to Eagles United Ministries, where we are breaking the yoke of bondage through the power of the Word of God. This is Pastor Jay and Evangelist Hill. We are about to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. If you want to call into our live show, call, call in at 347-826-9424. We want you to remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, but with God, all things are possible. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're everywhere. All you got to do is Google My Gospel Soul Radio, and you'll find us. We want to make sure we're always sharing a word that will inspire and encourage your spirit. Now, let's get into the show. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you all so much for tuning in um, for another show. This is not... Um, Eagles United. This is Soaring Like Eagle Show. Um, and we are um glad to have you all joined in today. It's gonna be a great show. Um once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um before we dive into it, I'm gonna go ahead and play a song for you all. Amen. You know how we always get started. Have a song going, get ourselves um in the mood for praise and worship. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Um, and we're just so glad about everything that um, God is doing. Amen. Even in the midst of everything going on, we still know that God is working. So because of that, we are so grateful. The song I'm going to play today is going to be called Wordy, and that's going to be by Pastor Jay, Wordy. Only 
All right, all right, amen, amen. Once again, that was the instrumental of Lord, You Are Good. Song that says, Lord, You Are Good, and Your mercy endure forever. Amen. Um, this is one thing I guess we got to remember, even in these times that we're in right now, is that God is still good. Amen. Amen. Even with everything going on, we got to realize that God is God, and God is still good, and God is still moving even in this season, even in the season of Corona, God is still good. Um, So today I said we were going to talk um, a little bit about peace. Amen. Amen. I love, I love having peace. Amen. I feel like I finally have peace. Amen. In my life and in everything. And I'm grateful for that. Amen. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm going to go as far as I got peace even in the middle of Corona. Amen. 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 Quarantine and stuck at home and unable to work, but I still got peace. Amen. 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 I may not have a paycheck coming through. Amen. But at least I got peace in the midst of it all. Amen. Amen. So, hey, thank God for peace, right? And that's the thing about we have to understand. It don't matter what's going on. It don't matter what situation it is that you're in or anything. You got to allow yourself to still be at peace with everything, you know, because once you find that peace, that inner peace, amen, that peace that God gives you, amen, amen. you realize that you don't really have anything to worry about, amen. But um, before we get started into that, Want to, once again, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Soaring Like Eagles. It's myself and um, who else? Who, who's with me here? It's me, Mary B. I hope everyone is having an awesome Monday. I hope everyone is turned in with us to John 14, verse 27. And that's John 14, verse 27. Also, everybody, we have a studio audience uh, today. Amen. Amen. We Amen. have the, um, <laughs> the members of Living Springs Community Church. Amen. 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 In case you all don't know about Living Springs Community Church, mm-hmm. uh, Living Springs Community Church is in San Antonio, Texas. Amen. Where you have um, none other than the pastor Larry Bertrand Woo-woo! and First Lady Mary Bertrand. Woo-woo! Amen. So, <laughs> really excited, amen. Um, to be to have the church members in the house today. We don't have too many of us in the house. <laughs> amen. We're not over the ten people limit. I don't want the police coming to knock at me. Police knocking uh-huh. at my door. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God tells me I'm not too good with dealing with police, so <laughs> I really don't want the police knocking. Amen. Amen. I'm Amen. not. I'm not. I'm not one of those snitching pastors. <laughs> Amen. Amen. From Chicago, we don't snitch. Amen. <laughs> Only time I snitch is when I'm telling my testimony. Amen. 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 That's the kind of. That's how I grew up. Amen. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, amen, but, you know, in Chicago, we realize that snitches get stitches and put in ditches, <laughs> amen. So. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I'll tell you that because um, one time I was driving by out here in San Antonio, and I seen um, one of the Mexican pastors out here, Lord, um, and he was snitching to the police. He was having a full blow, baby. I know he was snitching. He looked like he was snitching. His face looked like he was snitching. His face looked like he was snitching. It looked like he was snitching to the police. I don't know what he was telling that police officer, but he was snitching very hard. He was a priest, Lord. You, I hope he was snitching on. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I just know where I come from. You're not supposed to be seen talking to the police like that, especially for that long a period of time. Yeah, you know, you got to. And he was close, too. He was close, too. You know, when you close to, when you was having a close conversation with the police, that means you snitching. Or else you talk at a distance. How huh? what you said, officer? You don't get too close. Babe, we're going to go. But y'all know I'm a little, y'all know I'm a little crazy. Y'all, y'all know that. 
Y'all know that God is still working on me. Amen. Amen. While God is working on me, please don't call the police on me. Amen. 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 I don't. I mean, we don't have the bail money right now. It's Corona's going on. I don't want them to put me nowhere. Amen. Amen. Put me in the cell with them people during Corona time. Because if somebody calls while I'm in that cell, I'm about to ask a fool. I'm just in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm getting too much of my 219 personality <laughs> while I'm on here right now. <laughs> I'm going to save that for Thursday. I'm going to say that for Thursday. We're going to go ahead and get into um into the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we have Ms. Mary B. here who's going to go ahead and read to you um our Bible scripture for today. Amen. Is, is Mary B. reading it or is our church secretary reading it? Oh, our church secretary is going to read it. Amen. 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 We have Ms., um the secretary of um Spring, Living Springs Community Church. Here and she's gonna read our scripture for today, Amen. 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 Okay, so our scripture today comes from John fourteen twenty seven. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let your heart be let your let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Amen. 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 And we said we were going to talk today about peace. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you all. Amen. But I appreciate having peace. Amen. Amen. The baby, because I was in a marriage before, but I didn't have too much peace. Amen. Amen. So when God separated me from that relationship and God separated me from that marriage, amen, I I said I would not get into another relationship, amen, where it's not peaceful. Amen. Amen, amen. So I'm glad to be able to come to my home now and be able to live in peace. Amen. It's very important, amen, because if you don't have peace, then you have confusion. Amen. And we know that God is not a God of confusion. Amen. So that means that if you have confusion in your home, then it's definitely not of God. Amen. But um but in the in the scripture it says that I I give to you and I leave with you my peace. Amen. Amen. This is after Jesus had died on the cross and after he has rose again. And when he was talking to the people this one last time, amen, that's what he was telling them is that I'm giving to you and I'm leaving with you my peace. Amen. I'm not sure how many of you all are really catching that, amen. But God gave to us and left with us his peace. When Jesus died on the cross, amen, and he rose into and ascended into heaven, he he said, I'm going to leave with you here on earth my peace. Amen. I don't know how many of you all really understand this, but if you look into it and you realize, amen, as long as you have the peace of God on your side, amen, you really don't need much else. Amen. As long as you have the peace of God on your side, you really don't need much else. I was telling you all earlier, and y'all thought I was playing, but you know what I'm saying? I said, I don't know when the next check is coming in, amen, Amen. but I know I still have peace. Amen. When you have the peace of God on your side, you really don't need much else. And you see, the reason why is because when you have the peace of God on your side, amen, you're able to look at things in the spiritual matter of which God will have you look at things. You get what I'm saying? And when you are looking at things in the spiritual matter, you do realize that it don't matter what it is I have or don't have because I still have the peace of God. Amen. And then realizing that, hey, I may not have this and I may not have that, but I still have the peace of God. You will understand that God always takes care of his own. Amen. I don't know how many of you all really understand that. Amen. But God always takes care of his own. I know I've been um, I've been on this earth for 33 years now, and I know that God is always taking care of me. Amen. Even when um. Even when I didn't know how to take care of myself or even when I was foolish enough not to take care of myself, God still has taken care of me and have not left me yet. Amen. And I'm not sure who's listening in, but if you're able to listen in right now, amen, then I have a funny feeling and a sticky suspicion 
that God is taking care of you as well. Amen, because you're able to listen in right now. Amen. You're amongst the land of the living. Amen. Amen. And I don't know how many of you all really know this, but I know I probably don't deserve, amen, to be here right now. Amen. Amen. You know, if it was up to the enemy, I probably would have been taken out a long time ago. Amen. But God delivered me from the south side of Chicago or brought me here. Amen. And I'm here today, and I'm still standing and still breathing, and I'm still amongst the land of the living, and I am in peace. Amen, amen. But you see, the thing is, amen, to have um, one thing we want to talk about with peace is not letting anybody interrupt your peace. Amen. Um, you, I like when the scripture says, this peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but I give. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you understand this, amen, but you see, the world will give you things all the time and then they take it away. Amen, amen. How many of you all know when you're in the world, amen, you might have something and then you look up and that something is gone, amen. I don't know if y'all realize that, amen. I don't know how many of you all um, got food stamps, amen, and looked up and those food stamps was gone, amen, amen. You was getting unemployment benefits and you looked up, looked up and that week 10 hit and that unemployment benefits was gone, amen. I don't know how many of you all really understand that the world can give things and take things away, amen. But God, amen, gives it and keeps it, amen. So we understand, amen, that um, what God gives to us, amen, he'll never take away, amen. But although God may not take away our peace, we do have people out there who will try to take away your peace. Amen, amen. amen. I like to call them people um, the haters. Amen. We talk a little, we talk a little bit about the haters. Amen. Because the hate is real. The hate is real. Amen. And we know that there's people out there who don't want to see us succeed. Amen. There's people out there who don't want to see you happy. There's people out there who don't want to see you smile. There's people out there who don't want to see you living in peace. There's people out there when they see you living in peace, it just actually hurts their soul. Amen. They would rather see you down and out. They would rather see you walking around with your head down. They would rather see you walking around depressed. They want to see you in tears with your hair all over your place, with your clothes looking like rags. Amen. They don't want to see you doing good. Amen. For some reason, they hate on you so much, amen, that anytime they get to see you down or out, amen, it brings them joy and it makes their day, amen, because they don't want to see you living in peace. They don't want to see you living in prosperity. They don't want to see you living like the king and queen that God has you to be, amen, because they're hating, amen, they're hating on you, amen, amen. I know um, I, I live... Sort of like um, Cat Williams say, if I have one hater, I'm trying to get about three or four more by the end of the year. <laughs> amen. Amen. Because, amen, I realize that, amen, haters, hey, I'm motivated by my haters. Are you okay? Amen. I'm motivated by my haters. If I know you're hating on me and I know you don't like seeing me peaceful and I know you don't like seeing me enjoy, I'm going to walk around with an extra smile on my face. Amen. amen. Just so uh, just so you can look at it and see it. Amen. You can hate me now, like Nas said. Amen. Because, oh, amen, you might be disturbed by my peace and you might be troubled by my peace and you may have a problem with my peace, but guess what? This peace that I have, amen, you didn't give it to me. So guess what? Since you didn't give me my peace, amen, you're not going to be able to take my peace away from me, okay? You might be able to try me all day long and everything like that, and you know what? But I'm not going to let you bring me out of my character, amen, and I'm not going to let you take away my peace, amen? And that's the thing we need to be able to tell somebody, amen? When, when you go to that job, and that boss is getting on your nerves, and you know all you're trying to do is sit there, and then they want to steady come in your face and steady ask you questions, you need to be able to look at them, amen, and tell them, maybe not tell them physically with your mouth, amen, but you need to make up in your mind, guess what, this peace that I have, amen, you didn't give it to me, so guess what, this peace that I have, I'm not going to let you take it away from me, amen, 
Amen. Let's realize one thing about it is that the only thing our boss can give us is a paycheck. Amen. Because beyond that, amen, everything else we get is from God. And guess what? Even if we don't get that paycheck, amen, guess what? I still know that I have God on my side. And I may not get that check from you, but I'm going to get a check from somewhere because God is not going to leave me out. Amen. amen. So the thing is to realize that the the peace that you have, amen, don't let anybody take it away, amen. Now, I'm going to go a step further because of the times that we're in right now, amen, and I'm just going to also say this peace that you have, amen, corona didn't give it to you, amen, amen. and guess what? If corona did not give you it, did not give it to you, guess what? Corona can't take it away from you. Amen. Amen. I need somebody who's under the tool who really believes they can live in peace. Amen. In spite of everything going on. Amen. You might be social distancing, but you can still have peace. Amen. You might be quarantined. Amen. But you still have peace. Amen. You might be down for a little bit, but you can still have your peace. Amen. You may not be working right now, but you can still have your peace. No matter what's going on. Amen. Still believe in your peace and do not let your peace be taken away because of the times. Amen. The word says that we even made endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. It's the, something about that morning time. Amen. When we receive that joy. Amen. But until then, amen, although we might weep for a night, amen, do not let your weeping take away your peace. Amen. Because we have to understand that we can live in peace no matter what it is that's going on because God gave us that peace. Amen. But now that the world gave it to us, where they could take it away from us. So, but the kind of peace that will stay with you through all times, through all situations, through thick and thin. Amen. It's something about peace. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you all feel. Amen. But um, when you're able to walk into your home and it's all nice and quiet and peaceful. Amen. Amen. It does something to your spirit. Amen. But when you walk into your home and it's chaos. Amen. We all been there where we had chaos and drama, we walked through the doors, and sometimes you don't even want to walk in the doors of your own house because you're all like, I don't know what's going to happen today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You And then you so you, you got to pray before you even enter your own house. Lord, let this person not say nothing to me today, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Hey, man, you know, that's, that's not living in peace. Amen. But when you're able to walk into the house, you're able to sit down, and you're able to relax, and it's quiet going on in the Amen. You know, you can really understand, amen, the peace, amen, amen. And, you know, it's even, it even troubles your peace when you walk in and the kids are acting a fool, amen. When you walk in and the kids are running all over the place and bouncing on the walls or something, or they may not be bouncing on the wall, but at least it sounds like it, amen. Like, are y'all just throwing each other against the wall? What's going on? Why is all the banging on the wall? But, amen, that even just troubles your peace, amen. But when you walk in, and the kids are just quiet, Lord, and they they might be on their tablets or something, but they're just being quiet, and the blouse is quiet, and you can hear a pin drop, <laughs> amen, and you just want to sit down. You don't even want to cut on the TV, amen, because the drama from Love and Hip Hop might disturb your peace, amen, <laughs> but but you just want to sit down and just sit, sit there in quietness just for a second, amen. Amen. There's nothing like that peace that you feel when you're able to enjoy walking into your home and walking into a peaceful home. Into a, but the thing about having a peaceful home is living in a peaceful situation. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm here to tell somebody right now that you can't have a peaceful home if you don't have peaceful people over in your home. Amen. Amen. You can't have a peaceful home if you don't have peaceful people in your home. Amen. The peace that you have in your home has to be fulfilled by having somebody in their home who also wants the same peace that you carry. Amen. Amen. Because guess what? If you have somebody in that home who does not care about peace, then you're going to have drama. Amen. And the thing about that is that we have to understand that um, when, when there's drama, there also comes confusion. And then they get you all out of your character and they get you to scream and hollering and acting a fool. And then that's not peace. That's confusion and that's anger and that's um, 
resentment, and that's all things that come of the enemy. Amen. The enemy comes to do three things. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if the enemy can destroy your peace, if the enemy can steal your joy, you know he will definitely do it. Amen. And the thing is, you got to make sure that the people you have with you are also in line with what it is that you believe as well. Amen. The Bible talks about being equally yoked. But oftentimes we try to get into relationships with people thinking that we can change them. Amen. We get into relationships with people thinking that they're going to change or even get into marriages thinking that, oh, this person going to change. And then three months later, we're looking at divorce. But the thing is, amen, that we have to understand that we can't go into relationship trying to change people. Amen. 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 Um, we have to know the person that we're with before we get into that relationship. Because if you're going into a relationship trying to change somebody, you're going to be highly upset when you realize that that person can't be changed. Amen. You, um, I think Kay Michelle said you can't raise a man. Amen. They've already, already been raised. And that's your job to raise somebody. Amen. I'm sure I'm sure my wife could tell you. Amen. That uh, you can't raise a man. Amen. Because that's not your job. They, they should have already been raised. It should already been raised by the time they got to you. Okay. Amen. Amen. So if they're not raised by now, then it's not your job to raise them. Okay. It's your job to nurture, care, and love, but it's not your job to raise anybody. And if they're not already raised, then I'm here to tell you that's probably not the person for you. Amen. <laughs> um, we have to we have to know who it is that we're supposed to be with and who it is we're supposed to be in line with. Um and we have to be in line with the right people. Amen. That's the only way you're going to really have peace in your home is if you're in line with the right person. Amen. Mm-hmm. I realized when I didn't have peace in my home, I was, you know, knowing I didn't have peace in my home. You know you don't have peace in your home when you're at work and you're not even getting paid for overtime. You're still working overtime? Oh. Yeah, let's say, well, this one, you know you don't have peace. So I'm, I'm just trying to avoid traffic. No, you're just trying to avoid going home because you don't want to go home yet. I remember it was it was bad. It was so bad, y'all. That every time she had to go to work and I didn't, I thought it was a holiday. <laughs> I thought it was a holiday. I used to rush out the house. You, you need to get to work. Don't be late. You need me to take you? Because of the fact that I knew that because of the fact that I knew that while she was gone, I was able to have peace. But as long as she was there, I knew the peace was only temporary. Oh, okay. And that was the thing about it, amen. And there's nothing worse than having temporary peace, amen. I remember that I wouldn't even let the kids uh, bother me. Can you take me somewhere? No, not right now. She's gone right now. Wait till she get back, and I'll take you. <laughs> because, but um. But we um the thing is um living in peace, amen. And I don't know, I feel so peaceful when I talk about this, amen, because it's like a peace that just comes over me when I'm talking about the peace of God, amen. Because the thing about the peace of God is that it's un- it's unwavering. And you can carry it with you no matter what, no matter what's going on, no matter your situation, no matter anything. You can always keep that peace of God with you. And if that peace of God starts to leave you, then it's a problem. Amen. Do not let the peace of God leave you no matter what. Um, we got to be able to walk in peace, stand in peace, uh, move in peace. Amen. Think in peace. Amen. That's how you come up with the rational decision. When you're thinking in peace, amen. amen, amen. When we think out of peace, we start coming up with decisions that don't really make sense, amen. We weren't thinking in peace when we decided to smack that person, amen. Mm-hmm. But when you when you say, you know what, I'm not going to smack this person today, that was that peaceful thought that was coming out, amen. Don't let somebody take away your peace, amen. And the thing is, um, that y'all hear me say it all the time, is that hurt people hurt people. Amen. It's somebody don't want to see you happy. 
Somebody don't want to see you enjoy. Somebody don't want to see you smiling. Guess why? Because they're not smiling. They're not happy. They're not enjoy themselves. Misery loves company. And when somebody is miserable and somebody has all of these things going on in their life, and you walking around and you smiling and you got this smile on your face, you got this glow on you, and you feel that you just look like you living your best life. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hey, man, they don't like that. They don't want to see that. They want to see. They want to see you down like they are. They want to see you depressed like they are. Amen. Amen. How many of you all have those friends? Amen. Who hates it every time you get into a relationship because they're not in a relationship and they single themselves. So every time you get in a relationship, they uh. Mhm, and everything like that. But oh, you tell him you got a problem. What happened? <laughs> oh, what he do? Oh, I wouldn't stand for that. Oh, I would never. You would never have a man. So you, what you mean you would never like? Oh. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. That's the thing. People who are always people who have drama and people who have um, confusion and everything going on in their own life will always want to see you have drama and confusion going on in your life. But people who live in their best life, people who living in peace and in joy and in harmony, amen, guess what? They want to see you in peace and joy and harmony too. And when something good happens for you, they celebrating right along with you because something good is either lined up to happen to them as well and they know it's on the way, or guess what? It already happened for them, amen. That's how you know who your real friends are, amen. When you call your friends up and tell them, hey, I got a promotion, and they're like, great. Let's go out and celebrate compared to those friends. Who, I got a promotion. Oh, okay. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know what I'm saying? Their spirit is off. Their energy is off, amen, because they're not happy for you. Amen. That's what you need. You need some people in your circle who's going to be happy for you no matter what. Amen. You need some people in your circle who's going to be happy for you and be happy for your blessings, even though they might not have received it yet. Amen. Because they know that they're connected. Amen. So if they're, if you're being blessed, amen, and they know that God is still in the blessing business. Amen. That their blessing is right around the corner. Amen. amen. That's the kind of people that you need in your circle. That's the kind of people you need in your life. People who's going to be happy for you no matter what. Amen. And not people who's going to Try to despise against you, despise against what you got going on, despise against your your marriage, despise against your happiness, despise against your job, everything. You know what I'm saying? They always want something bad to happen, amen. That's not the kind of people you need in your circle. We got to be able to watch the people that we have in our circle, amen. If we are really going to soar like eagles, amen, we have to realize that if we're going to soar like eagles, we cannot hang around the chicken. Amen. I don't know who all caught that, amen. But if you're going to soar like an eagle, you cannot hang around a chicken. They're too low, amen. And then you're going to fly high, and they're not going to be able to fly with you, so they're going to hate on you. Amen. So you got to be able to, eagles fly with eagles. Birds of a feather fly together. Amen. And we got to realize that eagles are going to soar with eagles, amen. Chickens are going to walk with chickens, amen. amen. It's just the way that it's supposed to be. That's the way it's going to go, amen. amen. So we need to stop belittling ourselves and lowering ourselves to the level of a chicken when we know that we are already an eagle. Amen. We have to be able to realize who we are and who God made us to be and stop trying to little ourselves so we can fit in with somebody we have no business being around to begin with. Amen. Have you all realized how you ever being around somebody who don't have peace in their life and how it always brings your character down and brings you down as a person. And then all of a sudden, every time you come around them, you're never happy and you never enjoy, amen, because that person's never happy and that person's never enjoy, amen. It takes away from you. It takes away from your spirit. Every time you're around them, amen, your spirit drops, amen. That's because their spirit is down, amen. And you are feeding off of their spirit, and when you're feeding off of their spirit because you're connected to them and you have no business being connected to them, automatically your spirit is going to go down as well. That's why you need to make sure that your spirit is in line with the right people and that you're in line with the right people so that that way your spirit can be uplifted at all times, amen. You need somebody in your corner who's going to pray for you 
and for your spirit to be uplifted. You need somebody in your corner who's going to pray for you, even when you're not praying for yourself. Amen. You need somebody in your corner who's going to pray for you in the midnight hour. Amen. You need somebody who's going to pray for you when they go and do that, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. You get what I'm saying? You need somebody who's in your corner who's going to pray for you. Amen. Just because you say, you know what? I'm having a tough day today. Amen. 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 They want to pray for you. You know what? Oh, let's pray that. Let's pray against that. Amen. Let's lift that spirit up. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of people you need You need in your corner. The kind of people who hate to see you down. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of people we need in our corner. And if we don't have somebody who hates to see us down, then that means they hate to see you up. Right. And that's the thing about it. Amen. And we need to understand that there's no compromising in that. Um. And we have to understand that if we're going to move forward and we're going to be able to fly, we need to stop hanging around people who's trying to cut off our wings. Amen. We are made of royalty, um, kings and queens of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. And we have to understand that and we have to uh I know I heard um, I heard the first lady of um, Passion for Christ say that we have to wear our crown at all times. Amen. Amen. And uh, it may not be a physical crown that you literally wear on your head, but I need you to realize that every time you walk, you walk with your head up. Amen. Because that crown is on your head, and you wear that crown, and you wear it proudly, and you wear it high because you realize who you are. And don't let nobody ever take that away from you, amen. Because guess what? What God gives to you, amen, God does not take it away from you. Um, And uh, we're going to get ready to wrap up this show, but I do want to let you all know that um, I want to encourage you all to stay in the peace of God, even with everything going on in the middle of corona and everything. You've got Donald Trump getting on TV all the time, telling lies about when the corona is going to be over with. Amen. Do not let that shake your peace. Amen. Do not let it shake your peace. Amen. Um, be able to understand that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And as long as we keep our faith, amen, we know that God is going to keep us through the midst of it all. Amen. That's why the Bible says, that's why it says, don't be worried. Don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. amen. Walk in peace. Amen. It don't matter what's going on. Don't be worried. Don't let your heart get troubled. Um, and that's what the word says, amen. So let's be able to live by that throughout the course of this week. Let's be able to live in the peace and be able to walk in peace. Um, once again, this is another show, Soaring Like Eagles, and um, we're about to um, end the show. Mayor B, do you have any last comments? Thank you so much for the word. Ladies, did y'all enjoy the word? Amen. Hey, awesome, awesome. You guys, we just want to make sure that you all tune in every Monday at 7 p.m. for Soaring Like Eagles. Also, on Sunday, we will also have a time slot for Soaring Like Eagles, and we really appreciate everyone, and we hope that you all have a blessed rest of your week, and stay safe. Amen. Catch us on Thursday night um, on 219 to talk with myself, Mary B., Pastor J, J D the Barber, um, and Fitness Ray. Um so tune in on Thursdays, um, as we do that. Also, um, Living Springs Community Church is gonna be doing the Facebook live church on Sundays at three PM and do encourage you all to join in on that as well. Sundays at three PM we'll be doing the Facebook Live Church. Gives you all plenty of time to get up, get out to bed. Get yourself refreshed. Get some food in your system. And then get fed spiritually. Amen. 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 Um, thank you all for tuning in. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with God, we know that all things are possible. Amen. Who cares? God cares. God cares. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For he sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. Welcome to Soaring Like Eagles with Minister Larry Bertrand and Prophetess Mary Bertrand. Please sit back, enjoy the show, grab your Bible, and get ready for a word of inspiration and praise. 